First of all, we're going to look at Ezekiel chapter 20. Uh, no, we'll go to Isaiah 14. Isaiah 14, and then uh, we're going to go to 2 Peter 3. 2 Peter 3. And then we're going to look at Isaiah 14. All right. I am going to talk about the marine world kingdom throughout the Bible. And it is very interesting as we come through different world kingdoms throughout the Bible. How the book enlightens us on things that we did not see before from Genesis to Revelation. All right. Let's go right here with Genesis. And then let's see how it covers all the way to the timeline of Revelation. Okay, here we go. Let's start off with Isaiah chapter 14. The Bible says at verse 12, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? Son of the morning, how art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations? So notice right here, this is talking about Lucifer's fall. Okay, so we know that this is during the timeline before Adam and Eve then. So when he fell, he had a kingdom. Verse 13, for thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my what? Throne above the stars of God. Look at that. So he had a throne then on earth that was below the stars. What does that mean? That means then that he was on the earth then. See, because he's below the stars. How about that? So Lucifer's kingdom was once a throne that was below the stars. Now look what happens here. Keep reading. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the where? Heights of the clouds. So he's below the clouds. Now look what happens at verse 15. Yet thou shalt be brought down to what? Hell. Okay. So uh, hell was formed during the time of Lucifer's fall. If some people doubt Isaiah 14 to refer to that, then uh, you can ignore that and put that a future timeline. That's fine. But you can't deny Matthew chapter 25. Hell was prepared for who? The devil and his angels. So it was originally made for them when the devil and his angels start to rebel against God, when they start to do their own thing. So if that is the place over there, we're going to come back to this later on, which might be a little interesting. Hopefully I won't forget because I'm going everything from memory. So let's go to 2 Peter 3. Here's your first water world. All right. He had a kingdom on the earth. But then what happened? It was drowned out by a universal flood. Through this universal flood, Lucifer's kingdom, it drowned out the earth and all first, second heaven. All right. How do you know it's first, second heaven? Because notice 2 Peter chapter 3 is not about Noah's flood. Look at, verse, look at the last part of verse 4. What's the timeline of verse 4? From the beginning of the creation. See that? Right there. What happened? For this they willingly are ignorant of, that by the word of God, the what? Heaven. heaven. See that? So it's the first and second heaven. It's a universal flood. This is not just a regular Noah's flood on the earth. The heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water. See that? So it's actually the whole earth itself where it was like bobbling on the water. It's not just dry land itself then. So because it drowned out all the heavens. Whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished, but the heavens and the earth which are now by the same word are kept in store reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. Verse 7 and verse 13 will prove to you that the context is the entire universe itself and not just limited to the earth. So some people who deny the Genesis gap account I don't know how they argue against that universal context there, if you compare that with Revelation chapter 21, see. It's all coinciding. But as we continue over here, we see our first water world kingdom, Lucifer's kingdom underwater. Now, what happens? God divides the water 
at Genesis chapter 1. When he divides the water, this is very interesting over here. What does he do? When he divides the waters, as you read verse 6 and verse all the way to verse 8 probably, God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. So notice right here that within the midst of this water, what God did was put a firmament. So this firmament divided the waters from above and below. See that? So then we see water down here on the earth. So this is the earth, right? But then what God did was divide it. So I'm going to erase this part and then put the water here. So that's what he did now, right? So that's, where did I put my eraser? Oh, well, anyways, so I'll just erase it with this. So with this water, now he divided it. He put the firmament in the midst of the waters from above to below. Now, the one below, he called it seas, you'll notice. That is found at verse... Uh, that is found at verse 10, verse 10. If you follow the context of verse 7 through 10, you'll see that the waters below is called sea. Wait a minute. So this is the waters below. What about the waters above? Ah, you just look at Revelation chapter 4 and chapter 5. You see sea over here. See that? Sea. But now it's of glass. See that? That's why Revelation chapter 21, it says there was no more sea. That didn't make sense to people, but now it makes sense to you. He's talking about this one over here. See, because the firmament is right here. And if you look at Genesis chapter 1, you'll notice that in the firmament is where he put verses 14 through 18. That's where he put the stars and then the sun and moon. You'll notice that. So right over here, uh, there's no doubt this is what it's referring to. And what's very interesting is this. Satan's kingdom is continuing because, you know, his marine kingdom. That's where his marine kingdom is, right? So what does this relate to the present time? Well, before we come to the present time, let's see it popping up again at Genesis chapter 6. Genesis chapter 6. What happens? Adam and Eve rule over the world. When Adam and Eve rule over the world, Satan says, no, I want it for myself. So he steals it from them, and then it becomes Satan's kingdom again. So Satan's Genesis 6 kingdom, as we might see. And then what does God do? He drowns it out again. So look at Genesis chapter 6. And then we'll read Genesis chapter 6, verse 13. God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh is come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. You'll notice over here, the sons of God moving at verse 4. There were giants in the earth in those days and also after that when the sons of God, see, Lucifer's fallen angels, came in unto the daughters of men and they bare children to them. The same became mighty men which were of old, men of renown. And then what happened? God drowned it out at verse, chapter 7, verse 17. Chapter 7, verse 17 says, and the flood was 40 days upon the earth, and the waters increased and bare up the ark, and it was lift up above the earth. Okay, so God drowned it out again. Oh, I'm using black here. So God drowned it out again. So um, his marine world kingdom once more. Now, what is interesting is that when the waters receded, what's going on is that God no longer sends the world to drown, drown it out. And Satan and his minions, what is very interesting about these creatures is that you'll notice how they're connected with a marine aquatic form. You might say, why is that? Well, uh, look at Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 27. Isaiah chapter 27. Did you read about the four cherubims up in heaven at Revelation chapter 4 and chapter 5? But Satan, he's also known as the anointed cherub, see? So there are five, not four. The four are up in heaven. They're the good guys. The fifth one was the bad guy, got kicked out. 
But what you'll notice about these four cherubims is that they cover all classes of creature, so to speak, including humanity. So then a uh, lion, eagle, and then you see calf as well as man. So then they cover wild animals, domesticated animals, flying animals, as well as mankind. The one that's missing, you'll notice, is something that's an aquatic reptilian. See that? It's almost like an amphibian, so to speak, according to evolutionists that's between the scales. But anyway, aside from that, is that true? Would Satan qualify for aquatic reptilian? Yes. Look at Isaiah chapter 27, verse 1. In that day the Lord with the sword and great and strong sword shall punish Leviathan, the piercing serpent, even Leviathan, that crooked serpent. See, that's Satan, undoubtedly. The serpent at the garden that God will punish. And he shall slay the what? Dragon that is in the sea. See, it, it covers repti uh, reptiles and sea creature as well. Aquatic reptilian. So, isn't that, isn't the Lord treating him like a creature that's marine? So what does that mean? That means then it, Satan and his demonic creatures, that they're marine-like, so to speak. Their kingdom, their domain, is going to be a water domain. Is that true? Yeah, because you know who's swimming in the deeps? I mean, it says the dragon that is in the what? Sea. Is that what the verse said at uh, Isaiah chapter 27, verse 1? Don't look at me like a tree full of owls, you know? Is, isn't that what the verse says? God called it sea, correct? So he's right up there. He's right up there. Look at the book of Job where it talks about Leviathan. He's swimming in the deeps, it says. And then if you compare that with Genesis 1, when God drowned out the whole universe, he called it deep. And then that deep was divided to an upper deep, lower deep. See? So he's swimming up here. Not only that, that's why you'll see satanic activity over here too. You'll see satanic activity over here, and it's interesting where they talk about finding huge bodies of water over here. They'll mention that. Even scientists and evolutionists will admit that throughout outer space, they can find a huge, large body of water near the end of outer space. Even evolutionists and scientists will word it that way. So undoubtedly, you'll see over here that there's a marine kingdom of satanic activity, which makes sense with UFOs and aliens and etc. But let me carry that on further. It can be over here too, below the earth. Leviathan can be swimming below the earth too. So if you don't believe me, look at the book of Amos. Look at the book of Amos. So that's presently what's going on then. So presently what's going on is that Satan is swimming. He's swimming up here. That's why it makes sense that Job chapter 1, that he could speak to God up in heaven. Why? Because the floor of heaven is a sea of glass. It also makes sense at Revelation chapter 12, that Satan where? He's swimming over here where the stars are located. And you will find it over here. Look at the book of Amos, uh, the last chapter at the book of Amos. And look at verse 3. And though they hide themselves in the top of Carmel, I will search and take them out thence. And, they, and though they be hid from my sight in the what? Bottom of the sea. So this is right here, the bottom. See, not the top. Thence will I command the what? Serpent, and he shall bite them. See, it's personified over here. So this is, and who's the serpent? Satan. See, speaking of the same thing in Amos chapter 9 and verse 3, right there. How about that? Why? Because what's below the sea over here? Oh, oh, how about that? Uh, there's something that happened pretty interestingly over here. Now, this one is just a theory, though. If you look at Jonah, Jonah was swallowed by a great big fish that the Lord prepared. Yes. See, so this is not some normal creature. It could be some kind of supernatural God-created creature. So if that's the case, the verse shows when you read Jonah chapter 2, it, it says that he went down from the sea, but then as you keep reading, it sounds like it's going lower and lower to the bottom of the mountain, to the bottom of the sea, and then even to hell itself. How about that? Isn't that interesting? So I don't know if the fish carried him over there 
or if Jonah died in the whale's belly and then uh, his soul went to hell. That's more of the standard interpretation, but it could also be when he died at the whale's belly, there could have been some kind of supernatural phase or sequence that happened where that supernatural fish carried him down to hell. So I don't know how much that could be true. That's just a wild theory that I throw in there. Like your pastor says, he's always open to truth. And in order to be open to truth, you got to be open to possibilities. Amen. All right. So anyway, so that's something that interestingly happened. So this is what's going on at the present time. How do you know that? Look at the book of Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5. And then I will close it off with uh, one, one more verse. So we got to close it off. So I don't have time, so let's close this off quickly. Demon possession is real today. And what you're going to notice about demons, as you read the book of uh, Luke, and you read the book of Matthew, when demons come out of a man, they're going around dry places trying to seek habitation, but they can't find rest anywhere. So where, where do they want to return? To the body of the person. Why? Because inside the body of the person is water. It's all warm and wet. How about that? Now, if you don't believe me on this one, let's look at Mark chapter 5. Look what the devils did. When the devils were leaving the man, look at Mark chapter 5, verse 12. Chapter 5, verse 12. And all the devils besought him, saying, Send us into the swine that we may enter into them. Look at the devils, what? Besought him. They just, when they leave the man, why are they begging Jesus to enter inside the swine? Because they don't want to be outside in the desert, in dry places. They want to enter something humid and wet. In fact, they wanted wetness so much that, just keep reading verse 13, and forthwith Jesus gave them leave, and the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine, and the herd ran violently down a steep place into the where? See, that's how wet they wanted. How about that? That's presently what's going on. So S Satan, demons, etc., his minions, are all flying through here, but when they're, trying, when they're going about the earth, you'll notice the Bible says, uh, Satan says at Job 1, going to and fro the earth, walking up and down in it. So it's not something where they like, they like to reside in permanently. They want something wet surrounding them. Something wet surrounding them. That's why they enter people's bodies. That's presently what's going on. Now, can I show you something interesting? Look at Revelation tw uh, 13 and Revelation 12. All right? 12 and 13. Now, your pastor said a little bit about this. Look at this. If there are dwellers right over here in the second heavens and then as well as the water worlds, would that make sense with Revelation chapter 12 and verse 12? Therefore rejoice ye heavens, see that plural, and what? Ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the who? See, see that? There are inhabitants there in the heavens as well as seas. Interesting. For the devil has come down unto you having great wrath. Now, could this be really true that there could be demonic kingdoms underneath the sea and then they'll come out to the earth during the tribulation? Hmm. Revelation 13 verse 1. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw... His Majesty the Antichrist, a beast, rise up out of the sea. How about that? How about that? Could that be possible? Could be. So in Revelation, boom, comes out, here comes the Antichrist. The specific region is the Mediterranean Sea. The reason why is when you read Daniel chapter uh, 11, it talks about that he is Jewish Syrian in root. So then when it says sea at Revelation 13, verse 1, the best body of water that you can think of would be the Mediterranean, which is closer to that region of Israel and Syria. But aside from that, we can see right here, boom, he comes out. And then what's their end? Well, devils, they like something warm and wet. We saw that. That's why they reside in body of human, right? That's why the Bible says, which is eye-opening in Matthew 25, hell is prepared for who? The devil and his angels and Revelation 20 shows you that it is called the lake, lake, lake of fire. How about that? 
Now, see if they teach you that in Bible class.